This presentation covers nuclear reactions. If we're looking at an atom, we see that the electrons are in the outermost orbital. Within the atom is the nucleus, and the nucleus is containing the neutrons and the protons. So far, the only thing we've talked about, or the only thing we've looked at, is the outermost electrons. Okay, so in a chemical reaction, we're going to rearrange the elements and to make a new compound, but the elements are going to remain unchanged. So if we're looking at a chemical equation, here's an example of one. We have iron reacts with oxygen to form iron three oxide. Okay, this is the uh, the equation that produces rust. That's what it would look like. Okay, that's all we looked at thus far. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a nuclear reaction. In a nuclear reaction, we're going to be able to create new elements from existing elements, and we can write a nuclear equation. Let's take a look at a nuclear reaction. We can do one of two things. We can either change one element into another element. So for example, here, we're going to have uranium-238, and the way we name that is we're going to use that top number to this to distinguish which one of the elements it is. So this is uranium-238, breaks down into thorium-234, plus a helium nucleus, or alpha particle. And we'll see that what that is here in a minute, okay? That's one of the things that can happen. Another thing that could happen is we could change one isotope into another isotope of the same element. So here we'll show hydrogen reacting with helium-3, to produce helium-4, and a neutron is given off. Some of the, some, some of the subatomic particles that are involved are going to be either an alpha particle. Alpha particle is going to be written as 4,2-He. A beta particle, a beta particle can be written as 0, negative 1, and then that funny looking B, a, a beta, or you can show it as 0, negative 1, E. Essentially, a beta particle is an electron. For a gamma particle, gamma particle is going to be 0, 0, and a funny looking Y. That's actually a gamma. Then we have a neutron. A neutron is going to have 1, 0, and then the N is going to be the symbol. Or a proton. A proton is going to be a 1, 1, and a P, okay, for a proton. You need to be able to recognize these in a common, or in a chemical reaction, or essentially a chemical or a nuclear reaction, okay? Now, let's take a look at some examples here. For the alpha decay, alpha decay is the nucleus that's going to give off a helium nucleus. So here, you're going to have the parent nucleide, going to break apart to give off a daughter nuclide, and then the helium-4 nucleus is the alpha particle, okay? Carbon-14 is going to give off an alpha particle plus beryllium-10. It's another example of an alpha, alpha decay. Notice that that is the alpha particle right there. Now the top number is the mass, and the bottom number is the charge. So essentially we're looking at a mass of four and a charge of a plus two. For the second type of decay, it's going to be a beta decay. Here you're going to have an unstable nucleus release the electron and then convert the neutron into a proton. So here we have the nucleus converts a neutron into a proton. We have the parent nucleide. And then the daughter nucleide is essentially what the product is. And the electron. It's going to be a beta decay. As another example, we can have carbon-14. Carbon-14 is going to give off a beta particle. And forms nitrogen-14 in the process. 
Notice that the carbon has six protons and the nitrogen has seven. And there's our beta particle. And once again, here, remember that the top number is the mass and the bottom number is the charge. So here we have a mass of zero and a charge of minus one, which is the mass and charge of an electron or a beta particle. Okay. The third is going to be gamma decay. In a gamma decay, a nucleus releases electromagnetic radiation, but the isotope is going to remain the same. Essentially, all this is is a nucleus emitting gamma radiation. Our example here, we have carbon-14 produces carbon-14. Notice it hasn't changed, but it is given off gamma radiation. That's a zero, zero. All that is is energy. Once again, the top number is the mass, the bottom number is the charge. So in this one we would expect to see zero mass and zero charge. That's what we'd get. Okay? Now the relative strengths of these particles. Okay, radiation, radiation strength. An alpha particle cannot penetrate piece of paper. So it doesn't go very far. It doesn't have very much penetrating strength. A beta particle is going to take aluminum foil to be able to stop it. But a gamma or a gamma particle, look at how much it takes. It takes a lead plate or like I think it's two yards of earth to stop a gamma particle. So the gamma particle is the one that has the most strength. Alpha particle, the least strength. Uh, nuclear reactions have a lot more energy than any chemical reaction. A nuclear reaction involves the strong nuclear force. So it's going to be the strongest force in the universe. Uh, so it's a lot, lot more energy than any chemical reaction we would think of. When we're looking at the top number, the top number is going to be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The bottom number is the number of protons. And then we have the symbol. So if we know the symbol, we can find the bottom number because we can find it on the periodic table. And the number of protons on top, we, it just has to give that to us because there's going to be different isotopes. Now, in a nuclear equation, we need to be able to keep track of both the neutrons and the protons. We need to be able to track both of these things. So if we're looking at this, uh, this format right here, the top number is the A. The A is the mass number. Remember that the mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. And then the atomic number is the number of protons. The periodic table is going to be able to give us the number of protons. So if we know the symbol, we can find the number of protons. In a nuclear reaction, here's our example here, uranium-238 disintegrates into thorium-234 and helium-4. If we're writing this in a nuclear equation, this is what it would look like. What is the 238? 92 uranium, and then thorium 234 and 90 on the bottom, and then the 42He. Now, like in chemical, re chemical equations, we had to balance them. Here, these equations must also be balanced. You have to be able to balance a nuclear equation. The way we're going to balance these, we have to have the mass number be in balance. That is the top number. So on the left, we have, that is on the left of the arrow, we have 238. On the right, we have 234. And then we have another 4. Notice that is what is on the left, 238, is equal to what is on the right. 234 plus 4 is 238. 
not only do we have to balance the mass number, we also have to balance the number of protons. So here, the number of protons, we have 92 on the bottom on the left and 92 on the right, because 92 on the left and on the right we have 90 plus 2, which is 92. So both the top and the bottom must balance out in a nuclear reaction. Let's get some practice here. Remember to balance the top left and right, and then the bottom left and right. So for our first example, we have polonium-210. Have 210 on top and 4 on the right. In other words, what plus 4 will give you 210? That's going to be the top number. And on the bottom, we have 84 on the left. So what plus 2 will give you 84? And that's going to be the bottom number. Go ahead and work this problem out, and we'll check the answer in a minute. Okay, uh, looking at our second example, here we have carbon-14 gives off a beta particle, 0, negative 1, E. It's like an electron, right? Remember that you have to be able to balance the top, left to right, and then the bottom, left to right. This one's a little bit tricky because notice on the right, we have a negative 1. So what plus a negative 1 is going to give you the 6? Go ahead and come up with an answer. Okay, let's take a look at the answers here. For the very first one, we're going to have lead 206. Notice that 206 plus 4 gives you 210 for the top. On the bottom, 82 plus 2 gives you 84. The answer to the second one. All right, here we have nitrogen 14. On the top, on the left, notice that we have 14 with the carbon in red. So that means that on the right, we have to have 14. So it has to be 14 on top. On the bottom, on the left, we have 6. On the right, we have a negative 1. So that has to be 7, because 7 plus a negative 1 would give you 6. For summary, the alpha particle is 42He. Beta particle, 0, negative 1E. Gamma particle, 0, 0. Remember that the weakest, or the fusion reaction is a nucleus, it's going to spontaneously disintegrate. In other words, it breaks apart. Any of these decays will actually break apart. Uh, the top one is going to be the weakest, and then the bottom one is going to be the strongest. Nuclear reactions involve changes in electrons, protons, and neutrons. Remember, we have to balance out the reaction. You must balance the mass number, that is the top number, and you must balance the bottom number.